So hey guys, welcome back to the third episode of Panova Season Three. My name is Pradeep Kumar, senior partner of the Branding Cell, and I'll be your host for this episode of Panova Season Three. Today on the show, I I would like to give a warm welcome to a very special guest, Miss Sana Singh, an alumni of Batch 2020-22 from Singh School. Ma'am is currently working at Revature as a business development manager. We heartily welcome you, ma'am, and we can't wait to get into the conversation. So without any further ado, let's get started. So, ma'am, my first question to you is, ma'am, while going through your LinkedIn, we notice that you have a very strong background, and you have a uh, diverse experience through various fields. Could you just let us know that? Uh, let us know about your work experience as well as academics. Sure. Uh, thank you, Pradeep. So I think my journey begins, and uh, I would be a good case study for a person who's done a little bit of many things. Uh, I started as a commerce student back in eleventh and twelfth, and uh, that's where I realized I actually wanted to enter something creative. Uh, the idea that you come into work and put your mind to it and probably create something which many other people can use always enticed me. Uh, that's where you will find if you have. scanned through my linkedin that i have done uh, a design degree of which um, i also worked for about 3 years ago stack in the design industry specifically the jewelry design industry there luckily i got the exposure of uh, working with people who were trying to get me to understand that to create a product you need to understand who the consumer is uh, how you will market it to them and what it takes for an entire organization to get behind one idea and just to explain this to me they used to tell me to tag along with different uh, heads of the departments to basically learn from them about marketing and sales and that's where this entire bug began uh, from there onwards i went and did a degree in brand management uh, which was my first masters and i got uh, real life experience of working with brands of how is it that they stay relevant how is it that they uh, create products sell products and uh, keep their consumers glued to their products right because uh, that is something with very short attention spans that is something which every brand struggles it does not matter if it is at the top of the food chain or at the bottom of the food chain. and uh, for this very reason uh, by the time i came back to india and i really wanted to pursue an mba to underline and focus on the things that i had learned and understand also the theory behind some things some things you only see in practice and you don't understand the theory behind it uh, so this really helped me in engaging all the- theory and practical together and uh, the best part about sims is the amount of opportunities you get to basically keep practicing and getting better at what um, you're good at uh, so that's essentially been my journey so far and uh, that's how it's it gets a little complicated but the idea is basically to get behind what you like and uh, keep going at it whenever you get the chance thank you thank you ma'am ma'am my next question is ma'am so you did a 6 month long internship during your first year at snack amo as a digital marketing intern while also excelling on the academic front which could have been very difficult to balance while you're managing academics as well as doing the internship so could you take us through your uh, through your opportunity that how it showed up and how you performed throughout Yes, so um as you are aware since you are in uh, the first semester that um yes coursework is there and it's very varied it's very diverse and often at that time you are also figuring out what in the coursework interests you to make a career out of basically but uh, what i very vividly remember is that every single month that seems meant that they are a gazillion competitions coming your way there are a gazillion opportunities coming your way uh, to basically keep testing everything you're learning in class um and one such opportunity i got pretty much in the first or second month of being at sims uh, where we all uh, participated in a competition called the snackathon and where the idea was that we have to take snackamore which is a healthy brand it's a brand which is trying to sell to a healthy audience and uh, how do you market it in a way where um people would want to buy it because given the choice between a lays packet chips and given a choice between nuts you would probably go for the lays you know that's just how it's drilled into us um so we had to actually pitch an entire uh, marketing strategy to the brand and uh, the people who pitched the best strategy would be given the opportunity of actually uh trying to implement that strategy in the next 6 months of the internship uh so that's pretty much what happened with me 
that I had pitched the idea and they wanted to see in the course of those six months if I could bring those ideas to life. So it can't only be good on paper. And uh, that was the entire challenge. And uh, yeah, it gave me some very good learnings along with what we were already doing in class. Thank you. So ma'am, my next question is, as a follow-up to the previous question, uh, as a student manager is already so busy with all the assignment deadlines and the extracurricular activities which we're already indulging in. Like for example, it is becoming difficult for, difficult for us to balance the academics as well as being in the cell. Yes. So it is really fascinating and intriguing to know that how you manage to juggle both, both of these activities for the next six months. That too in your first year itself. So what I try to do essentially is, yes, there was a part of the day which had to be dedicated to assignments. There is no doubt about that. There were many and they used to often come uh, like in waves. You know, like there are times when you don't have and then you have 10 assignments together. Uh, so the idea is just to plan your time in such a way where you know which is the time that you should be keeping for assignments in a way where you're not spending far too much time on that, balancing it out a little bit. I too was a member of this same branding cell. So at the time we were also trying to figure out what it means to be a part of the branding cell and how or do we position the branding cell for the future. You know? So that was an additional task. But by the time I found myself in the internship, it was little by little where, you know, one or two hours every day, you will sit and think about um, the tasks that are given for the whole week. I was also lucky enough to be found in an organization where uh, the owner of the organization was willing to give us time. You know, we weren't very, uh, like when you're already working, for instance, in today's, like how it is for me today, is where we have very crunched up deadlines. Uh, there, however, since he was aware that we are also doing the MBA, he was willing to give us a little more time than you would normally have uh, to finish the same projects. And uh, that meant that all of what you were learning was culminating into either it is happening or it isn't happening. So when it's not happening, then you will troubleshoot again, come back around with new ideas and then try to um, create better, right? Also, one other very important aspect of all of this is that you are not working alone. There is always a team, right? Uh, so there is division of labor at every single point in time. And that really helps not only in the fact that the work is getting done, but also that there are new ideas every day on the team. Everyone has a different way of thinking. And that really, really helps, uh, especially when you're working even in an internship environment where a lot of um, my classmates from Sims itself were within that same internship, right? So every day, in the, at the end of the day, after finishing assignments and after doing cell work and probably more activities, which everyone has taken on, uh, perhaps even more competitions, uh, there would be a time where we would sit one hour a day or two hours a day to discuss what is it that we need to do for the internship and how we are going to tackle it. And most of our meetings, like the longer meetings used to happen on the weekend with the boss. So Saturday, Sunday used to be dedicated to this where, okay, now you implement. If you thought for the whole week now, how do you implement that? And that's how we used to get around it. So something on a personal note, like when, whenever we are supposed to give such deadlines to our seniors, something which happens is that throughout that week, we do not work anything. We do not sit together and think about it. What happens is when it comes to the deadline, we finally some of brainstorm and we come up with the points which are necessary for yes. that. Yes. So that is something which happens. So yes, how, so I would like to ask a personal question, like, were you working throughout the week or were you working only through, during the deadline itself? Like, No, the... I was working. So one, I think, so personally for me, one thing that helped is um, paying a little attention in class. Yes. You know, it goes a really long way. Uh, because when you don't pay attention in class, the yes. alternate problem is that you need to also understand what happened in class and then do the assignment. Uh, that's double work, uh, at least what I used to look at that. So if you pay attention in class and you have your notes to back you up, often the assignments were very aligned to those notes. Uh, they weren't very uh, far away or needed a lot of time and a lot of engagement. Uh, they did require you to be attentive in class and just apply what you've learned in class. You know, that's, that's about it. That's all that's required. And uh, that's basically how I was dealing with that aspect. And yes, I'm not actively doing assignments the whole week. That's... I don't think anyone does that. Uh, but uh, whenever we were, we wanted that if you're spending one hour on assignments, the assignment should get done after one hour. You know, we should not procrastinate more. We should be thinking more. So the thinking should happen before. When you sit down to work, the work should get done. 
uh, that's the whole idea. Otherwise, you'll never get anything done at SIMS. Uh, as you already are, probably are facing, right? Because there is so many different things to do that if you keep procrastinating, nothing will ever get done. Um, so you have to get behind it. Keep reading as well. Reading helps a lot on your own time. Whenever you find the time, read whatever interests you, uh, whatever field you're taking on, be it finance, marketing, sales, does not matter, but keep reading. That will also help. Thank you, ma'am. So ma'am, my next question to you is, uh, since you worked in Snack Amour, as, as an intern. So could you let us know what were your learnings for the same? Like, what did you learn from your internship? How it has helped you to shape up as an individual today? What you have become? So, Snackamo started with what was a digital marketing internship, but we took on, what happened is that we had a team of people from different colleges uh, because not everyone was from Sims. Uh, we were about seven, eight of us who had to align times across different MBA colleges and sit down nearly every day um, and the basically all our responsibilities were split so somebody was handling only social media somebody was handling only um, in-person marketing somebody was handling the sales aspect so all of this was divided but way before this it started off with uh, creating a branding plan and I remember this was happening uh, while we were learning the branding plan in class so that's also parallelly happening and we were applying it here and every day we would sit with uh, not only some of the people from the Snackamore team, or not just the owner, owner we used to only meet on the weekends, but we would sit with that team and uh, they would inform us what is doable in the budget and what is not. Everything was against money, right? We cannot just suggest uh, create a, you know, a huge company tomorrow. How do you get to the huge company? So for that reason, whenever we used to sit with them, they used to tell us what is feasible, what is not feasible. And uh, the creativity used to be uh, not restricted by the money. That's the idea, that the money should not restrict your creativity. You keep working and seeing what is possible in that budget. Uh, so that was a very important learning because oftentimes when you're creating branding plans, we forget about that. We think that's the finance department's job. <laughs> it's not, it's still your job. Um, additionally, what we learned is how fast social media is. So we engage in social media, but creating social media content every day was a task, right? Uh, we also learned because we created the branding plan, we learned that everyone wants to be healthy, but as a brand, we cannot target everyone, right? It's not feasible. So we created archetypes, consumers that are going to be interested by our product. And once we did that, we started marketing to them Specifically, so our entire year's marketing plan, uh, whether it is Diwali, so whom are we targeting on Diwali? Whom are we targeting on Christmas? Whom are we targeting on any of these times of the years was basis those archetypes. And that really helps streamline, you know? So if we are targeting a mother to tell her child to eat healthy, then that would happen at certain times of the year, right? So we were aligning everything. And so also understanding consumer profiles, which is also a subject that we were undertaking at the same time. Uh, was uh, very important because you cannot make everyone happy. Everyone does not want to be eating uh, dates and nuts, right? So that was a very, uh, very important learning as well. Um, but more or less, it is just teamwork. I think teamwork is another thing uh, to let everyone go ahead with their strengths, who is good at what, and then you allocate across that team. Um, I also come from a design background, so I also had the opportunity of uh, designing the packaging and the logo for Snackamore, uh, which was a very interesting process, uh, continuous reiteration, and continuous working on how it can be made better and uh, more informed because the consumer wants to know what they're eating. It's a matter of consumption, right? And everything is FDA regulated, there are food rules and uh, laws that you need to stick by. So I uh, learned a lot of that. So yes. It is a 360 degree experience. <laughs> so that's a great experience, ma'am. Like, for example, I can relate with your part when you said about it becoming exhausted, like when you're working on the branding part, because you constantly need to be creative. And that is something which I don't think even you will agree that you cannot be constantly creative. Like there will be a moment for brain drain. Or even one of the things which has, which may have worked in your advantage is that while being in designing, it, of, it obviously gives you a very creative part. Like you'll be constantly creative regarding it. That is something which could have helped you. To that, I have something. So I get it. I understand that. We always have those slums where you just cannot be creative anymore. You know, you'd rather get the idea from anywhere else. 
I understand that. Uh, but there is something about um, continuously coming back to your work with a fresh eye, having the fact that it's not just you working on it, right? So if I've made the packaging, I'm showing it to other classmates, telling them, does this make sense? Would you like to see this on a counter? You know, would you buy it if you see it on the counter? Uh, so at times when you have a block, other people can help you. You know, and that's the best part about creativity. It's not necessarily uh, just you doing it. Somebody else could come in, intervene, and still the product could be good, you know, and still there's something which comes out of it. Um, so yes, the expectation is definitely not creative to be all the time, but the expectation should be that uh, you should be able to back your idea all the time, right? So whatever you're going behind, you should be able to back it. And that's the only way where you can sell it to anybody else. Otherwise, it's not possible. No one else will buy it if you are not convinced. Right? My next question to you is, now coming to SIP, since you did not take part in the SIMS process, like SIP process by SIMS, so how were those two months utilized by you, like when you were enrolled in the internship part? Uh, so, unfortunately, I was uh, hit with uh, COVID-19 for the first time in my life. Uh, just as I entered that SIP, I think just the week before, in fact, I was also giving exams at the time and uh, it was pretty hectic and uh, tiring in many ways. Um, and plus, I had a bad episode of COVID. So what I did is as soon as I recovered, which must have taken me about two and a half weeks, so that ate up into my two months. But uh, definitely after I got better, I was able to spend a lot of time in reading. I read a lot. And how I approached it is that, uh, of course, I had some reading materials that I would ardently go to that not only include POs, but also uh, brands that I track, right? What are the brands doing? The brands that we all know of, we talk about every day, but we don't care to see what they're doing or how they're doing it, right? And another aspect of it is also to understand how these brands came to be, right? So just learning about their journey, you learn so many different ways in which the same thing can be done. And I further supported this by uh, creating sort of a skeleton of my own blog, which I started out at that same time, uh, which is called Mind and Mild, and where I was writing about everything I was reading. So anything interesting that I found, uh, which um, would also interest other people, not just people like me who are interested in sales and marketing. But um, I wanted to write something, which was my perspective on the same thing. So if I'm reading a book, uh, by Steve Jobs on Apple, then I'm trying to understand what is that I can learn out of it, right? What is the transferable knowledge? So one is the inspiration that the man is man, man behind it was great. And yes, it was an amazing team and the idea was great. But there are those moments, you know, where it's just pure genius, right? There are those moments in any company's journey which is pure genius. So if you start reading about it, you will realize that some of those very small ideas can be applied to things that you yourself may be facing at work or for instance at that time in competitions that we were taking part of right the case study competitions it will help there it translates directly uh, so that's how I spent most of my time other than that I did take part in a few competitions of course a lot of them didn't come through uh, but I did spend time in taking part in competitions just to keep applying what I've learned thank you man my next question is that coming to the final placements, like usually what happens is that when people get bag an SIP from college itself, they tend to bag an PPO as well. And in that case, they tend to get either the highest package, probably one of, or at the average level. But at your, in your case, you were not able to bag an SIP from the college. But how you were able to become uh, one of the highest baggers of the SIP, uh, final placement from your bags? Okay, so there's a disclaimer here. And the disclaimer is that... Um, I did not look at it from, um, let's say, the money perspective, right? Which is uh, how much the company was bringing in. Because honestly, when the company came in, I did not even know what it did. I had never heard its name, right? So I had to educate myself on what the company is doing. Firstly, the company only operates in the United States, right? So as a consumer, I'm not using it, definitely, because I'm sitting here in India. So I had to educate myself on what the company is doing and how is it making a difference there. Okay, so it is in the education sector. So what in the education sector does it do? Um, a lot of this is what I did for a lot of the companies that had come at the time. Uh, and also for the SIP, which incidentally I did not apply for. But you still have to learn about the companies which you are even, uh, let's say, 50% interested in. 
right? Somewhere where you see your career is going to map, somewhere that you see opportunities for yourself. Uh, so it was a good idea to continuously read about them. And the same happened even when I um, was giving, even during final placements, where I was continuously reading about the company. And that was you in very good stead. If you enter an interview without knowing what the company does in one line, or even if, let's say, they tell you, okay, explain what our company does. What do you think our company does? There is no way you're going to clear that interview. Right, there is there is no company on earth which is going to uh, let you uh, be a part of their organization when you don't know what they do, and also researching a little bit about let us say, you know, if you have cleared one round, right, and it could happen that you have met the person that um, that is going to perhaps interview you again for the second round. So it's a good idea to also read up about that person. Right? So LinkedIn is a great source of reading about, about these people. So next time when you are having a conversation, whenever the opportunity arises, you can also have that one-on-one -on -one link with them. Perhaps you, they come from the same college. Uh, they have done the same course. You know, They are interested in something that you are interested in. Uh, so that really helps in creating that rapport during the interview. And these little, little things other than, of course, understanding uh, your role at the organization, do you want to take on that role? Um, and also understanding how exactly you will be a part of a team, which that which the person in front of you should be able to explain to you. Uh, all these factors to me were a whole lot more important. And so the reason I really went after the revenue because we had nearly three rounds of interviews, uh, was the, the fact that they were able to tell me what my role is, right? And that I'm interested in that role. That's important because otherwise, you cannot work nine to five every day in a role that you don't like. <laughs> There's no way you will never perform well. And secondly, to see where your strength fits in that role, right? What are you good at uh, that you will continuously provide to them? And uh, also in the long run, learn. Because for me, the last about I've been interning with them since January. So all these nine months have gone into just learning about what they do and how well they do it. And uh, it's still a learning curve, right? It's constantly changing and the market is constantly changing. So, uh, yeah, so I suggest that whether it is an SIV, whether it is even if you ha are on the internship, it's a tremendous opportunity um, to learn about the company, right? And see where where is it that your interests lie and where is the company, right? Because it is somewhere at that cross-section where you will find a career. Right, that you'll see that you want to stay there for whatever, five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, all of that good stuff. So I hope that you guys do the same. I hope man, the followers, uh, the listeners will surely follow this one because it is something which even I am struggling with and I am noticed, noticed as well. My last question to you, ma'am, is uh, what advice would you like to give our, give our batch, the MBA batch of 2022 and 24? Um, the first thing and something that you should really take away is the fact, if nothing else uh, from this talk, is the fact that you should remember why you came for the MBA, right? Uh, what were your, what was your to-do list before you joined the MBA, right? And what, whatever that would look like, right? It would be just to have a job uh, for somebody. It's more specific. I want a job in X, right? I want a job in Y. Um, so, it doesn't matter what it looks like, but the idea should be to get closer to it every single day, right? So everything that you do during this MBA, whether it is whether it is just how you perform in class, whether it is the competitions that you take apart, take part of, right? Whether it's a co-curricular activity that you're doing, be it sports, be it anything, but it should basically get you closer to that, right? And if you're already aligning yourself in the two years of coursework, uh, by all means, you will also find yourself in a job which is closer to that by the end of it, because you've constantly been thinking about something that aligned with you to begin with, right? Uh, again, the idea here is to be the best version of you, right? It is not to see where your classmate got placed. It's definitely not to see uh, what the pre where the previous batches are either. It's actually where is it that you want to be? And automatically you'll find yourself in good places with the right people in the right time, all of that, right? So um, it's a good time to just learn, learn a lot, learn not only from your teachers, learn from your friends as well. Everyone must come from very, very different backgrounds 
right? So it's a good idea to just have conversations on what backgrounds everyone's come from. And I'm sure there's inspiration uh, there as well. And uh, a lot of you will have the opportunity perhaps even uh, to start uh, new organizations together, right? Because an MBA is a place where you find people who want to start businesses together, who have the acumen and also uh, the good, right ideas behind it. So it's an excellent place to uh, basically spring into the life that you want to hit. Uh, it is just how you're going to use that time. And uh, have fun as well. I mean, that's very, very important. If you're not having fun, <laughs> then you may as well not do the MBA, right? So have fun. The fact that you're in campus makes it so much nicer compared to us. We were holed up um, behind a desk for two years, right? All of us falling sick at different times of the year. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to like have fun, spend time with friends, also learn and in the process, uh, be in a better place in campus, right? Yeah, that's all. So thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. I'm grateful to have you here today. And thank you for allowing us to take a peek at the journey and learn from it and how it will be beneficial for us in the long run. I would also like to thank our audience for, uh, for spending time with us. If you like this episode, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this podcast with your family and friends or with someone you think who might benefit because currently the SIP is going on and I think that everyone needs to listen to it. And the podcast was brought to you by the Sims Branding. Right.